have been here to this convention center many, many, many times, seen seas of people before, but nothing like this. I see all of you, and I'm so grateful that you're here. Unfortunately, the mass media said, don't even bother. <laughs> I'm really glad that you showed them what's up. We have to keep doing that. There is a lot that is at stake. I have been doing voter registration for 11 years. And I can tell you the one question I'm asked over and over and over and over and over again is where are the young people? Right here. Where is the diversity? Right here. Where are people coming together under one umbrella with one vision for a future that we can all dream and believe in? Right here. When I say that this election is critical, I, I, I'm, 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 at a, I'm at a loss of words because, because this election being critical is, is too small to talk about it. This is, as Harry Belafonte said, about the soul of our country. The soul of our policies and about our vision. We do not need incremental change, we need bold leadership. And that is what Bernie Sanders brings to the conversation. We do not need someone who's ready to hit that shiny red button when they get into office and create more wars, create more inhumanity around the world, create more tension, more fear. Understand how significant this is. You're here because you're talking to each other, not because you're being encouraged by the DNC, not because you're being encouraged by the media, but because you're talking to each other. So understand what that means. If Bernie doesn't take this all the way, if we don't help him, if we don't make sure that he takes this all the way, Net neutrality will be pushed back upon. Deborah Wasserman Schultz said, the reason superdelegates exist is specifically to push back against grassroots organizing. So we need you now more than ever. We need you to spread the message and talk about our future. The youth has been on the right side of history on every issue. They talked about those hippie college kids when they were protesting against Vietnam. Martin Luther King Jr., who Bernie Sanders walked with, couldn't have gotten and done what he did when it wasn't for high school students who said, I'm not afraid to do a sit-in. They didn't listen to us when we said no on the bailout. They didn't talk about how remarkable and beautiful it was when millions of people around the world marched for peace before a war, before the Iraq war, millions of people across nations marched across cultures, across language, and said no. So Bernie wasn't the only one who was right to vote against the Iraq war. We were. And it's really time that we make them listen to someone who's actually going, I don't need to hesitate on the idea of the KXL pipeline or fracking. I'm not gonna vote against the Patriot Act once, I'm gonna vote against the Patriot Act twice. Thank you, Bernie Sanders. We need someone who has bold leadership to understand that with climate change, with healthcare, with education, with our future at stake, that we need bold leadership from someone we can trust. Someone who has stood up for justice his entire life. They haven't listened to him, but we are. And we need to keep spreading that message because people are voting against themselves. 
They are hurting themselves and their future. And we need to help them because we need to help each other because this is about us. It's not me. It's not one person. It's not just a party. This isn't the GOP versus the DNC. This is about the 99% that is too big to fail against the 1%. So if I, when I hear someone ask me, well, 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 if it comes down to it, will you uh, vote for the other candidate if it's Trump? I say if you want to beat Trump, vote Bernie. We are playing chicken here, and we can't pull back. They are going to have to turn. That candidate is the Ralph Nader, not Bernie Sanders. As an independent, he is doing a service to the Democratic Party right now. The Democratic Party hasn't, we haven't left them, they've left us. This is an opportunity to turn the tide and change history. Do we really want someone who condoned mass incarceration, who thinks that the death penalty is okay, who hesitates on environmental injustices and issues, who thinks that regime, regime change is an idea for foreign policy. No. What we need is bold leadership from a great leader whose time has come. Truly, this is a future to believe in. It is not a dream, it is a vision, and it is worth going for with all of our might. This is for our future, for my children, your children, our great-grandchildren, and beyond, to know that when this happens, and the future that comes, and they go, you know, when immigration reform, education, health care, when we were at war around the world and attacks were happening, what did you do? You can say, I voted for the person who turned the tide. So make sure that you're not just liking this on Facebook, but that you're bringing tens of people, at least each of you, I, I, I'm really, I mean it, across the states and talk to them and say this is what is at stake and make sure that this isn't just reflected here among ourselves and just a memory, but something that is pushed through and we get to see in the history books. Because history is written by the winners, so we must win. Thank you.